Hello and welcome to this week's news bulletin from the Christian Institute. David Cameron has decided to give government ministers a free vote on plans to rewrite the definition of marriage following a wave of protest. The move is significant because normally ministers are expected to vote according to government policy. This week, Owen Paterson, the Northern Ireland Secretary, became the first cabinet minister to publicly oppose the plans. Writing in response to a letter from a homosexual constituent, he said, Having considered this matter carefully, I am afraid I have come to the decision not to support gay marriage. Other ministers, including Philip Hammond and Gerald Howarth, have already expressed reservations about the government's plans, with Mr Howarth commenting that it was absolutely right and proper for MPs to be given a free vote. However, Deputy Prime Minister and Lib Dem leader Nick Clegg has said that he won't allow his coalition partners to derail the plans for gay marriage. And the Advertising Standards Authority has been accused of bias after its chairman, Lord Smith of Finsbury, who is gay, recorded a video for a campaign backing the redefinition of marriage and saying that he personally wants to marry. The advertising watchdog is currently investigating adverts placed by the Coalition for Marriage, a group which supports the current law on marriage. The ASA has acknowledged that Lord Smith has a conflict of interest on the issue, but ignored a call for him to resign, adding that any decision on the outcome of their investigation would be fair and impartial. But Colin Hart of Coalition for Marriage hit back saying there seems to be a willingness on the part of the ASA to do its uppermost to clamp down on freedom of speech and debate in this country. Prominent atheist Richard Dawkins says he is backing a scheme to send a commemorative copy of the King James Bible to every state school, but only because he thinks it will turn kids off the scriptures. Education Secretary Michael Gove has begun sending copies of the Bible to celebrate the 400th anniversary of the King James Version. Professor Dawkins says that the initiative is justified because of the historic text's impact on the English language, and even said that he would have made a financial contribution to the scheme. However, he made clear that his underlying motive was the hope that the scheme would turn youngsters off the Bible. Christian content on the internet is at risk of being censored by technology giants like Google and Apple, a conference has heard. American Christian media groups met in the US to discuss the problem and to explore solutions. They warned that traditional Bible-based Christian views on moral issues like abortion and marriage are under threat. The National Religious Broadcasters Organization says some internet giants have already used their power to block Christian viewpoints they don't agree with. NRB Senior Vice President Craig Parshall says the time has come to debate the problem, continuing, We hope to forge an exploratory path to resolve this dilemma, where both freedom of speech and free enterprise can flourish. Access to free fertility treatment on the NHS should be extended to same-sex couples and women over 40, say a health watchdog. In draft guidance, the National Institute for Health and Clinical Excellence say lesbian couples should be allowed further investigation and full IVF once they have gone through six attempts with donor sperm. The guidance also suggests raising the current age limit for IVF from 39 to 42 for women who have no other chance of conceiving. But Josephine Quintavale, director of campaign group Comment on Reproductive Ethics, said the NHS should be focusing their money elsewhere. She also criticised plans to allow IVF for same-sex couples, saying, Just because someone's sexual persuasion does not allow them to have children does not mean we have to kowtow to political correctness. Children as young as five need to be warned about the risks of sexting their friends, a police child protection expert has said. Sexting involves children sending explicit images of themselves to each other. Peter Davies, chief executive of the Child Exploitation and Online Protection Centre, told MPs that the practice was a growing problem, and his organisation is now sending films to primary schools with the aim of teaching the children how to avoid the online dangers. And an NSPCC study found that more than a third of girls under the age of 18 are now affected by the increased pressure to text and email photos of themselves. A major comic book superhero like Superman, Batman or Robin is in line to be turned gay by the character's owners. DC Comics and co-publisher Dan Didio had originally planned to introduce a new character who would be openly gay. 
but the owners have changed their mind and next month will announce that one of their established and most identifiable male superheroes will be outed as gay. Meanwhile, rival comic book publisher Marvel has said that their Astonishing X-Men will feature a gay wedding in one of its storylines next month. And finally, we bring you an inspirational story of Christian couple Ian and Larissa Murphy's faith-filled love and commitment for each other. The couple, who met at college, had been dating for just under a year when Ian, who had been thinking about proposing to Larissa, was involved in an accident which left his life in the balance. Larissa takes up the story. Ian had suffered a traumatic brain injury. God totally spared his life. Uh. One night he was failing four out of five brain activity tests and the next morning he was doing well and his brain was starting to respond again. I knew that before Ian's accident he was very serious about marriage and was ring shopping so I knew where he was and that helped me so much after he couldn't talk. I knew that he loved me and I knew where he wanted the relationship to go because we were dating very intentionally. We just prayed that marriage would someday happen and watched all of our friends get married and start having families. That was challenging, but we just tried to hold out hope that that would be us someday. I think what helped us in deciding to make this commitment to each other, at least for me, is knowing that Ian wouldn't have left me if the roles were reversed and that we love each other and we know that God's going to be faithful to our marriage. Hi, husband. Uh, I like me. How are you? Uh, yeah, yeah. What? I love you. Oh, good. Yeah. Yeah. How was your day? Well, an incredible story. That's all for this week. For more information and regular updates on all of our stories, plus much more, visit our website at christian.org.uk. Until next time, goodbye.